Hello children, today I am going to discuss the sample paper that's been posted by the uh, CBSC. So we'll discuss that and uh, I'll give you the answers to the questions too and I'll begin with the, the passage, the first passage in the right, uh, reading skills. Page 1 has the comprehension passage, the first comprehension passage from section A, reading skills. And it's about ghost nets. They aren't supernatural like the ghosts, but then it talks about the nets, the fishing nets that has been lost or abandoned in the ocean. And what a uh, problem it creates to the marine life. The entire passage is about that, what a problem it creates to the marine life and what they wish to do and what the need be to, to remove them from the sea because of the problems that they create. Okay, and then after that, that's page number two, we have it. And there are questions. Now we begin with the questions. And uh, the first question being, based on your understanding of the passage, answer the questions given below. <coughs> Complete the sentence by choosing an appropriate option. The options are given there. Ghost nets have been named so because... Uh, a is cause much harm to the marine life. B are functional though not in use by fishers. C are not owned by anybody. And D is act as snare for all animals in oceans. The correct answer is C not owned by anyone. Then question number two is comment on the writer's reference to the ghost nets in paragraph one as a health problem for the oceans. The marine, marine, The answer is Marine life frequently is sick and nothing is done. The health issue, if nothing is done, the marine life is frequently sick and if nothing is done, the health issue would be chronic. Then question number three, list the two ways being uh, entangled in a ghost net is likely to impact a walrus. It's, a walrus is an animal better. It would entangle and cause injuries. Okay, question number four is select the option that conveys the opposite of negligible from the words used in paragraph two. The options they've given are A is unimpressive, B is monumental, C is exposing and D is threat. The answer is monumental, opposite of negligible, which is B. Question number five, the writer would agree with the given statements based on the paragraph three. Most ghost nets take a few years to completely disintegrate. That's A. B is ghost nets contribute to the Great Pacific garbage patch. C. Most ghost nets provide nutrition to marine animals upon disintegration. And D being ghost nets can curtail freedom of marine animals. The correct answer is C. Most ghost nets provide nutrition to marine animals upon disintegration. Now, question number six is, some records share that fishing nets used to be made of common rope using natural fibers prior to the 1960s. Based on your understanding of the paragraph three, list one major advantage that these had over the fishing nets being used in the present times. The old nets that were used were biodegradable and which would easily disintegrate as compared to the artificial fibers which do not disintegrate. Now the question number seven, why is it fair to say commitment and innovation have to go hand in hand to rid the oceans of the ghost nests? The first point here would be perseverance. Time to get it done. You need persevere. You need to persevere time. You need time to get it done. And second one is creative ideas required to solve the problem. Two problems. You need to, to give a problem uh, answer to that. Two pro points. Complete the given sentence with an appropriate inference with respect to the following. The writer quotes the example of WWF led mission in the Baltic Sea. In order to draw the attention towards the magnitude of the problem, second one, government needs to
to collaborate with such groups to deal with the ghost net problem. And third one is carelessness towards natural resources. You need to give just one answer. There may be, I may be reading two, but you need to give just one point to that question. One mark, one point. Now, page number three. Uh, ninth question is, how can the solutions suggested in paragraph five best be described? A is practical, B is presentable, C is popular, and D is prejudiced. The, f the correct answer is A, practical. Now, tenth question, select the most suitable title for the above passage. A, the scary side of ghost nets. B, ghost nets, a result of human dominance. C, ghost nets, a menace to marine life. And D, ways to tackle the problem of ghost nets. The correct answer is C, a menace to marine life. Uh, the second comprehension is about the leadership development. That should it be a part of education system. And then there was a, uh, the need for that, leadership programs. And then there was a research. And uh, some questions were asked, question one, two, three, and were asked. And the children's responses were listed there. The responses and the lessons learned are given on there and the questions that follow. This study described the rich array of leadership lessons that students are learning. Now, the questions based on the understanding of the passage answer the questions given below. And the, the researcher believes that educational institutions have ideal resources to study impact of leadership skills on young adults. Uh, the options are True if the statement agrees with the information, false if the statement contradicts the information, and the next one is not given if there is no information on this. The correct answer is false if the statement contradicts the information. Now question number two. Do you think the researchers of the study aim to change the students' outlook towards the development of leadership skills, directly or indirectly? Support your answer with reference to the text. The answer is no. Aim to seek. The aim is to seek the students' perception, to be enabled a better designing or creation of the leadership programs in educational institutions or schools. Question number three is, Select the option that displays the most likely reason for including research questions in 2014. In order to find out, A, learning opportunities shape students' overall personality. B, is leadership lessons are the result of design learning opportunities. C, is all learning opportunities catered to a specific lesson. And D, Lessons are common in more than one learning opportunity. The correct answer is D. Certain lessons are common in more than one learning opportunity. Question number four. Complete the sentence based on the following statement. More than 50% of the identified student respondents were keen to participate in the 2014 study. We can say this because... You have to fill in the blanks there. 72 out of 130 students consented and were interviewed, which is more than half. Question number five. Select the option that displays the key event designed with balancing rules. Table one are uh, as the objective. A option. Students will be able to debate the issue at hand with different teams. B. Students will be able to manage the responsibilities of a mentor planner, researcher, and presenter. C is students will be able to surmount minor problems and focus on the final goal. D, students will be able to explain concepts with clarity for uh, uh, and clarify them for peers. Students will be able to explain concepts and clarify them for peers. The correct answer is B, students will be able to manage the responsibilities of a mentor, planner, researcher, and a presenter. Now, question number six. Complete the given sentence by selecting the most appropriate option. The 2014 study attempts to understand student leadership by focusing on option A, experiences that shaped students' overall personality, B, lessons gained by students as they grew up, 
see relationship of key events with a particular lessons and d students in leadership roles the correct answer is c relationship of key events with particular lessons now question number 7 the lessons for individual competencies had a range of responses give one reason why having the least number of responses for decision making is a matter that needs attention students experience do not allow enough opportunity for the development of this important skill now question number 8 complete the given sentence by selecting the most appropriate option the in, the concluding sentence of the text makes a clear case for collaboration by listing it as a core competency for student leadership there are options a collaboration b flexibility c hard work and d observation and the correct answer is collaboration complete uh, question number 9 complete the sentence appropriately with one or two words in the context of working with others uh, in table 1 the lesson of conflict refers to resolution or resolve or uh, effectively resolve effectively or amicably conflict i read the question again in the context of working with others in table 1 the lesson of conflict refers to conflict resolution 1 resolve effectively second option and third one is amicably and you have to write any one of these based on the reading of the text state a point to challenge the given statement when theoretical knowledge about leadership surfaces it is a waste of funds by educational organizations to organize leadership camps and programs no um, now the answer to this no amount of theoretical knowledge can help to apply their learning about leadership and development skills children these were the two comprehensions and i've solved them and the answers also i've given them they are there in your paper now i am going to discuss section c that's literature and for the writing skills i'll make another video other time now uh, uh, section c literature the fourth question there they have given you an extract from the poem uh, roadside stand and the extract it's there in front of you in the this thing and it is in the news that all these pitiful skin uh, kin it is in the news that all these pitiful kin and uh, then after that it the passage ends destroy their sleeping at night the ancient way okay so this is the passage that's given there and then there are questions there and when you have to mark the right answer there the first question is what is the tone of the poet in the above lines first one aggressive second tolerant third sarcastic fourth resigned and fifth sentimental the poet robert frost is sarcastic about it the way he's written it all is sarcastic they are going to collect them all and then give them house to live in and all that uh sarcastic sarcastic why did i say the tone was sarcastic the poet's tone is not he's taunting he's making fun yes you are going to give them place to uh, live and what is your intention so there is sarcasm there uh, and then they say choose the most appropriate option it's only 3 sarcastic is 3 okay choose the most appropriate option a is only one b is two and three c is one four and five and d is only three the answer is only three d then next question is identify the phrase from the extract that suggests the following no one bothers to take the consent before pushing the promise of a better life their way swarm over their lives that means enforcing benefits swarm they they just they don't have the option to say yes or no we want it or we don't want it see remember the roadside stand people they have they are living a miserable life and then they are removed from there 
given houses and why are these they are removed by the beneficent beasts of prey because they wish to occupy the land on which they were doing farmers they were farmers actually they will bring them to the city there and when they bring them to the city and attract them well you've got a house you'll be living near a theater and you'll be living a store you'll enjoy the movies there and you'll be able to buy you'll have lots of money and all that but then the, the choice is not given to them whether they would want to or not so it's that what it's there the third one what quality of the villagers can be inferred through these lines uh gullible gullible okay they don't have a uh, this thing no uh, say in that they are not understanding what they are doing and all that first one is a gullible b is futuristic c is hi- hi- hypocritical and d is ambitious answer is one gullible complete the following analogy uh, correctly comparison correctly do not repeat from the example G- greedy good doers is alliteration beneficent beasts of prey is another um, alliteration i uh, when i do the next uh, after finishing the poem children i'll be doing this um, poem with you which i haven't done it and then i'll explain the poetic devices there question number 5 on the basis of the extract choose the correct option with reference to One and two given below. The city dwellers make promises for the betterment of the villagers. Number two, the city dwellers have ulterior motives. Means they don't have their intentions are not clear, uh, not good. They appear to be good, but intentions are not good. So, uh, answer is C. Two is the reason for one. A is one is true, but two is false. B is two is true, but one is false. C is two is the reason for one. Both one and two cannot be inferred from the extract. The correct answer is C. Two is the reason for one. Fill in the blanks with an appropriate word with reference to the extract. Calculated to suit them out of their wits implies that them are being manipulated or fooled. Them are being manipulated or fooled. the next uh, passage that's given to you the lines are from uh, the poem a thing of beauty and the lines begin a thing of beauty is a joy forever and a flowery band to bind us to earth that's the last line so these are the lines from where you get the questions choose the option question number 1 choose the option that displays the same poetic device as used in the first line of the extract options are a i'm happy as happy as i can be b is life is a roller coaster ride c is nature is god's gift to us and dazzling divas enchanted all a uh, life is a roller coaster ride option is b number 2 question number 2 what does the phrase a bar quiet indicate and the options are a serenity b morality c superiority and d diversity the first answer a is the correct answer that's serenity question number 3 the benefits of a thing of beauty for humans include options 1 is healthy body 2 is calm mind 3 is struggle free life 4 is better relationships and fifth is hope to carry on the correct answer is choose uh, b- below they've given the options choose the most appropriate option a is only five correct answer b says 1 2 and 5 are correct answers c is 1 3 and 4 are correct answers and d is 2 and 4 are correct answers that's what they say but the correct answer is b out of a b c d b is the correct answer that's 1 2 and 5 are the most appropriate options there answer in one word when the poet says that a thing of beauty will never pass into nothingness he means that it is immortal everlasting or eternal just one word you have to write there 
on the basis of the extract choose the correct option with reference to the two statements given below we are surrounded by beautiful things Be second one is beautiful things provide us joy a is one can be inferred from the extract but two cannot two is uh, b is two can be inferred from the inferred from the extract but one cannot c both one and two can be inferred from the extract and d is two is the reason for one and can be inferred from the extract the correct answer is b two can be inferred from the extract but one cannot now question number 6 which of the following is is the apt title for the extract a is full to the brim with joy b is beauty glory c life live life king size and d hope floats the correct answer is d hope floats now question number 2 Uh, attempt any one of these extracts this any one of the two extracts given and they are one mark each children and this is from the lesson on the face of it which is the uh, 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 play from your book visitors dairy you are peculiar his dairy is talking to mr lamb you are peculiar you say peculiar things you ask questions i don't understand and there is a conversation between dairy and mr lamb and uh, there are questions on that list the playwright's purpose of using ellipses in this extract ellipses are like dairy you are there are dot 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 that's an ellipse and then again there is uh, dairy says yes but uh, and then uh, dairy again but uh, dash uh, that uh, sort of a space and i like it here i liked it then there are again the lips so what does it mean by that what does it show what wh what's the purpose of this the the uh, the purpose of this is that a character is thinking what is to say gathering his thoughts you know you say i mean uh, that that's what it is so the character is thinking and what to say or gathering his thoughts that's the answer to this question number 2 select the option that best describes dairy and mr lamb in the extract a is dairy is introvert and mr lamb friendly uh dairy b is dairy is fearful mr lamb domineering c is dairy friendly mr lamb weird and dairy open minded and mr lamb charming The correct answer is dairy is introvert. Mr. Lamb friendly. Remember, Mr. Lamb is friendly, and he is. He says, "Well, all are my friends." And uh, then uh, dairy says, "Well, you don't know my name. That what does it matter? You're not my enemy, and therefore you're my friend. Everybody is my friend." But that's the friendly nature of Mr. Lamb. Whereas dairy is introvert. he doesn't um, open up in front of others though finally he does open up in front of lamb mr lamb he talks to him but then basically he is an introvert who keeps to himself so that's the answer of two question number 3 which of the following best summarizes mr lamb's attitude towards the bees a is beauty is being true to yourself B is there is a kind of beauty in imperfection. Beauty is the promise of happiness. And D is the beauty of the world lies in the details. Well, <clears throat> the answer D is the correct answer. The beauty of the world lies in the details. Though there is another um, could be there. There is a beaut kind. There is a kind of beauty in imperfection, because. the bees buzz and nobody likes the buzzing of the bees but then if you like you go into the detail of it if you keep on listening to it they seem to be singing so therefore the beauty of the world lies in details that's the correct answer d dairy says i came in here because i liked it what was the one significant thing that dairy might have liked about the space as per the extract 
Derry says, I came in here because I liked it. What was the one significant thing Derry might have liked about the space as per the extract? Perhaps he felt the place was lonely. There was nobody there. And remember, he does not like company. So he felt he was away from people. People who like to pass comments, who like to stare at him. And therefore, he liked the place because there were nobody there. Because he himself says, if I had seen you, Mr. Lamb, I wouldn't have come. Hmm? So away from people uh, who pass comments and stare at him. The next is uh, a passage from Students on Ice. The program I was working on aims to do exactly. And then with the students on ICE, he offers the future generation of policy makers a life-changing experience at an age when they, they, they are ready to absorb, learn, and most importantly, act. Journey to the end of the earth. That's the passage from Journey to the end of the earth. Now, the first one is, complete the sentence appropriately with reference to the extract. The writer refers to the educational opportunities as inspiring because of motivation to work towards the good of the planet, understand the need to respect the planet and nurture it and not abuse it. Remember, you need to write just one point here because there's one marks. Three options are there. You could use any one of them. I repeat it, because of the motivation to work uh, towards the good of the planet and then understand the need to respect the planet and nurture it and not abuse it as we've been doing it till now. Which, uh, question number two, which of the following would not be a life-changing experience? A, being given the lead role in a play. B, going on an adventure trip. C, playing a video game. And D, meeting a great leader you admire. The correct answer is C, playing a video game. Question number three, select the most suitable title for the given extract. A, adventure with a mission. B, adventure, the spice of life. C, wanderlust. D, students of the future. The correct answer is A, adventure with a mission. Why does the writer refer to act as more important than absorb or learn? Act implies, the answer to this would be, act implies the implementation of that which is learnt or absorbed, which is the sole purpose of learning or absorbing. I've given you the answers, I've written down the answers in the questions and I've marked them, tick marked them so you can read them. Now, the next one is a girl from the countryside, she hadn't gone through all the stages of worldly experience. This passage is from Poets and Pancakes. Okay, and then... Uh, it is concluded, as you've got it in the, uh, this thing, on your screen, the legal advisor wore pants and a tie, sometimes a coat that looked like a coat of mail. Often he looked alone and helpless. The lesson is poets and pancakes. The first question is, select the option that completes the given sentence appropriately. Stages of worldly experience in the given context would refer to a, option A, good education to gain knowledge. B, situations that require one to be street, street smart. C, smaller, not so important roles in acting. And D, training in soft skills. The correct answer is B, situations that require one to be street smart. Select the suitable word from the extract to complete the following analogy. And that's a comparison. Sealed, closed, propelled catapulted catapulted the answer uh, third select the correct option to fill in the blank the harm done to the actress was a uh, or an a is a well-planned act b is unintentional act c act of jealousy and d act of male dominance the the lawyer did not plan to hurt uh, the the girl it was an unintentional act and remark that he did not intend to hurt he made he 
com pass the comment and that hurt the girl so it was an unintentional act b is the correct answer now based on the above extract choose a statement that is true for the legal adviser the options are a he disliked the actress from the countryside b he acted after thinking through things carefully c he did not get well with the others in the department and d he he was always dressed smartly the correct answer is c he did not get well with others in the department question number 5 identify the textual clue that allows the reader to infer that the writer is sympathetic towards the professional fate of the actor uh the fifth question the answer to the fifth question is that he felt it was a sad end to a brilliant career unwittingly brought about that sad end sad end so that shows he was sympathetic towards the the girl then uh, question number 6 complete the sentence with an appropriate explanation as per the extract the writer uses the word uniform to refer to the outfits of the department members because just like a uniform everyone wore the same type of dress now third b uh this is from the interview you have a lesson which is termed as interview the title of it is interview and it begins from some might take quite extravagant claims and it ends there then one is stealing that person's soul that's the passage and it's given to you you can see it in the paper on your screen what is the most likely reason some people consider the practice of interview to be an art this is because it requires options a fluency of words b sensitive and careful handling c creativity and imagination d probing and focusing on details the correct answer is c creativity and imagination uh second one is rewrite the sentence by replacing the underlined phrase with its inference the sentence is celebrities feel that an interview diminishes them uh celebrities feel that interview makes them appear weak or impacts them negatively third one on the basis of the extract choose the correct option with reference to two statements given below the first statement is celebrities don't con consent to be interviewed second one interviews intrude the privacy of celebrities uh we've been given a b c d and d that is uh two is the reason for one two interviews intrude into the privacy of celebrities and therefore they do not like to be to agree to be interviewed that's what it is because if you are going to ask them questions they may have to reveal reveal certain things which they may not want to therefore two is the reason for one uh question number 4 is rationalize to support the given opinion to say that an interview in its highest form is a source of truth is an extravagant claim now uh remember we i may give you two options but then you have just to write one because there's one mark to it you could say interview may be scripted interview may be scripted they may tell you what the questions are and you write down the in answers so that may be another not the truth second one may make false statements they may make, how do you verify whether what they are saying is correct or incorrect then certain questions may not be answered or may be left unanswered there may be certain questions which are unanswered you do not know the answer so how could you say it's a truth interview is a truth you cannot say that uh question number 5 replace the underlined word with its antonym from the extract uh remember antonym and synonym synonym means the words that have the similar meaning antonym opposites some celebrities hate the idea of having to give an interview because it makes them feel like supporters the antonym supporters they are supporting the interview or the antonym would be victims okay question number 6 is author views on interview is in the extract can be best described as statements based on facts 
hypothesis, beliefs, and superstitions? The correct answer is A, facts. Uh, answer any five of the following in about 40 to 50 words and there are two marks to it. And there are six questions and out of which you have to do the five questions. Now, uh, they have to be written in 40 to 50 words. Remember, try not to exceed the word limit because the, your marks may be deducted there. Now, I read the question. You realize the true value of a thing only on losing it. Comment on this statement in light of the story, the last lesson. Remember, uh, the French people were, an order from Berlin said no more French would be taught in the schools. German would be taught. Now, when they came to know that no more French would be taught, they realized the value of their mother tongue. Remember, French is not important, French or German. It's French was their mother tongue. They were French people. So they realize the value. So the answer is there could be two points to the answer. Remember, a two mark answer needs to have two points. So the first point is an order from Berlin bans French in schools. And then they realize the importance of their mother tongue when they can no more study French. And Mr. Hamill never took, they never ever took Mr. Hamill seriously. But now when they knew, came to know that Mr. Hamill was leaving and they were, they were sad about it. They felt bad that he was leaving. His, he had been there for 40 years. Okay, I've given you uh, the written down the points there. Please write them in, com answer them in your paper in complete sentences. They are just answers are point wise. I'm trying to explain whatever I can, but then the Things that are written, they are just point wise. So don't copy them as it is. Write in proper sentences. Next one is uh, common issues faced by most aged in the current times. The poem is My Mother at 66. Now that we are doing the poem, I wish to remind you, remember to learn by heart very well the, poet, the names of the poets. You must know all the writers, okay, but the poets especially, all the poems and their poets. This is written by my mother, 66, written by Kamla Das. Now, the common issues faced by aged people. One is loneliness. And one thing more, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting in between. Please don't write your answers point-wise. It's not science or uh, commerce or anything. It's literature. Therefore, you have to write in complete sentences. I'm giving you point-wise. You've got it written there in front of you point-wise. But that has to be written in complete sentences. So the <clears throat> issues faced are loneliness, need of support, and declining physical health. Third question is, what do we come to know about the author of Lost Spring, Anish Jung, through her interactions with Sahib and Mukesh? Her interactions with Sahib and Mukesh, these two are rag pickers. And Anish Jung happens to meet them in the morning every day, and she talks to them. Then wants to, uh, no. Mukesh lives in the bagel making industry, Firozabad. And Sahib is a rag picker and he is in Simapuri, Delhi. Whereas Mukesh is a bangle maker, his ancestors have been making bangles and he is in Firozabad. Okay. And Sahib is in Simapuri, Delhi, outskirts of Delhi then. Now it's a part of Delhi, Simapuri. So she interacts with Sahib who comes out in the morning to pick up rags. And then she goes to <coughs> Firozabad, the city of Bangal makers and talks to Mukesh. Okay. So when she talks her interactions with Sahib and Mukesh, what does it show about her? Now, what do we see? We observe that she is a very observant person. She observes details, details. Small little detail, minute details. She asks him, you don't go to school? She asks Sahib. He says, no, there's no school at all there. In my locality, when there's one, I would go. And then she happens to promise to him, well, if I open a school, I, you'll go. He says, yes. So she's observant. Second one is she's sensitive. Sensitive to the misery and the suffering of these children. And she's sympathetic towards them. In fact, empathetic. Not only sensitive, she's sensitive, you're sensitive to the suffering of somebody and you feel bad about it. 
okay and she is empathetic that means she feels the pain she she feels the pinch of their suffering and all that but then she is helpless because she cannot do anything she is helpless she promises sahib in the beginning of the lesson lost spring she promises sahib uh, if i make a uh, not promises she just tells us sahib if i make a school will you go there and later on she realizes she has made just promise that which she can never or she never intends to fulfill the promise so she feels helpless she cannot do anything but she feels bad for them okay uh, the fourth question uh, is to give two reasons why pabla naruda in keeping quiet essential to attaining a better and more peaceful world he are uh, he in the question is why should he keep quiet why what what would he attain by that that's what he's trying to say pabla naruda keeping quiet and he says uh, uh, keeping quiet leads to a better and a more peaceful world how how would keeping quiet help us to attain a better and a more peaceful world now the points are help to reflect introspect and retrospect it would give keeping quiet would give you time since you are not going to do anything it would give you time to reflect introspect and retrospect what have i been doing till now and what am i doing at the present and then realize that we are doing mindless actions unthinking things which harm us as well as others we are doing things which harm us ourselves and as well as others mindless we don't give an attention pay attention to what we are doing harming yourself one example is i told you um, when everybody stops sees all activity the man gathering salt would look at his hands will get time to look at his hands and then he'll realize the hurt that is done by the by the by the work that he's doing and the work that he's doing is gathering salt it has hurt saline water if he's going to put his hands in that it would hurt his hands and then we cutting or felling of the trees for instance war against nature what are we doing we are we are harming nature but we don't realize it's a mindless act and we would also develop by keeping quiet we would also develop understanding we would understand our brethren the people around us we would understand we would be same in the same peaceful environment and we would understand them they are same like us they are our like our brothers why should we do things to harm them so the three points there are realize our mindless actions introspect reflect get time to introspect and retrospect and third one is develop understanding you have to give any two reasons okay the next one is if the christmas is about selflessness forgiveness and becoming better versions of ourselves amongst other things edila is the epitome of the spirit edila uh, edila in fact i call it her a reservoir reservoir of virtues or values you know a reservoir in your city you have a reservoir from where you get the water the tap water that's got is from the reservoirs huh? as reservoirs it fill there's less water there's more water water there and there's less water so we'll not get water or whatever it is so that's a reservoir so she's a reservoir of values and virtues children and talk about any value and she has it and here they've mentioned only selflessness forgiveness and a better version of ourselves remember a better version of ourselves we are man we are human beings and we need to have humanity humanity so she is an epitome of the spirit justify with two points of evidence from rat trap now the first one is peddler's reality is disclosed and yet she gives shelter to him she dis- she realizes who the peddler is he entered the house as a captain her father thought he was a captain friend of his ex army man man and he invited him well you are my friend you know ex army man and all that and all that a captain and calls him a captain and introduces him 
to Adela as a captain. Even when it's known to them now that he's not a captain, she still treats them with the dignity of a captain. She is forgiving. Do you understand? She forgives. Okay. The next is she has... She treats him, I told you, with full dignity and respect of a captain. She often calls him a captain. He's not a captain. He's just a peddler or a rat trap seller. And yet she gives him, she respects him. Okay. With the dignity of a captain. That's her understanding and her forgiveness. She invites him for the next Christmas. Remember, when on the Christmas Eve, they all gather there. Most of the time, peddler is sleeping as if never slept his entire life. Remember, sleeping peddler is a homeless person. He doesn't have a home. He sleeps on the streets. Now, sleeping on the street and sleeping in a house, the comfort of a house, the security of a house, on the road if you're sleeping, all kinds of sounds and noises are there. But on the in a house, comfortable sit, sleeping. So he's sleeping. He's sleeping there. And in the evening, the Christmas Eve, when he gets up, goes about wishing everybody Merry Christmas. And then Edla tells him, well, the dress that my father has given you to wear, to change, he was in rags. Hmm? You, this is a Christmas present for you. And then she says, so much understanding. If, if, if the next Christmas, if you wish to have a, a peaceful day, peaceful time, please, you're most welcome to come to us again. The first time he entered the house, Edler's house was due to a mistaken identity. But he, now, after knowing his reality, she still invites him. She still invites him to her house the next Christmas. So, what a selfless act of hers. Then besides, when, when uh, her father turns him out, he comes to know the reality, she says, no, I've promised him Christmas feast and Christmas cheer. Please let me keep my promise. A, a person or a lady who wants, does not want to break her promise, she's made to a person. The word that she's given. So these are the qualities there. Uh, now the next, that's the sixth question. How can we say that marriage was a compromise for Aunt Jennifer? Give two reasons. Marriage was a compromise for Aunt Jennifer. She had a lot of constraints and re uh, restraints. Don't do this, don't do that, you should do this, do that. All that, constraints and refrains. She could not. Remember, she was a suppressed person, a very docile kind of a person who would not raise her voice or oppose anybody. Whatever is told to her, whether she likes it or not, she does it. Then she is burdened by responsibilities. It's... The marriage, the, remember, the question is, marriage was a compromise for Aunt Jennifer. Reasons, you have to give two reasons. And the three reasons that I'm giving you, you could choose any two. Constraints and ref, uh, restraints. Don't do this, restrict it from doing this, that, that and that. Burdened by responsibilities. She's burdened by responsibilities. Remember in the third paragraph of Aunt Jennifer, even when she's dead, there would be still marks of the ordeals that she had, she was mastered by when she was alive. Ordeals that she had, ordeals are difficult tasks, that she had to perform when she was alive. There were the difficult tasks that she performed when she was alive, they left marks on her body. Even when she's dead, the marks still would be visible. That means she was burdened, in fact, overburdened by responsibilities. Uh, the third point could be, could not live her own life, the she, way she wanted to. She could not live her own life the way she wanted to. Everybody has a desire to live their own life. The, they want to, the way we want to, it could be different from different people. But she, she had nothing of that sort. And that means she had no freedom to choose her kind of a life that she wanted to live. And remember, she made tigers, tigers who are free, who are fearless free to do what they want. They are prancing, they may run, they may do whatever it is. She embroidered them to give feelings to her innermost desire, expression to her innermost desire of being free and fearless. 
The sixth question, it's easy to judge others and give advice, but, but much more difficult to apply it to ourselves. We give advice to others, you should have done that way. Why can't you do that way, this way? But when it comes to us, huh, do we really follow our own advice? That's the question is from the third level. When Charlie uh, happened to reach the third level, and he went and, and, and got lost and all that. Then he went to his psychiatric friend, Sam, and told him, Sam said, okay, okay, it's your imagination. You are so stressed out. You wish to escape from the stress and the tensions of life. You are so bored and all that. So you just um, wish to escape. That's a way of escape. Okay. And imagination, you're dissatisfied with your life and so on. Remember, Charlie, that day when he reached the third level, supposed to have reached the third level, he said he, was, he had a very bad day in the office and he wanted to reach home to his wife. So he was something, some kind of tension or dissatisfaction, unhappiness was there. So Sam said, nee, nee, it's just that. Okay, but then the story ends with the Sam himself going in search of a third level and in fact reaching the third level. So Sam, the psychiatric, tells Charlie, you want to escape from the realities of life and therefore you reach the third level. There's nothing like third level, no existence at all. It's your just imagination. And he himself looks for the third level and in fact shown to us that he's reached there. And why, how do we know he... <coughs> He's reached the, uh, he looks for third level. He exchanged the old the new currency to the old currency towards the end. Charlie wants to, uh, goes to that shop and he finds that Sam had gone for the old currency. So he was looking for the third level and finally he got a, in your first day cover, he gets a slip note which says, I've reached the third level. So Sam tells Charlie, well, you you want to escape from the reality of the life which is so full of tensions and worry and all that and all that. It's nothing. Escapism. And he himself does that. So it's easy to advise others, but then when it comes to yourself... Okay. Uh, the next question is number two. Comment on the writing style is style of the author Kalki in Tiger King. It's from the Vistas. Now... The writing style is the point wise I've given. It's satirical, making fun of it. You know, ah, yes, going on killing tigers, this, that, that, and that. That's satirical. And then, you know, the satirical points could be well, um, I'm going to kill tigers. Nobody else, Tiger King uh, issues an order. Nobody else, even if somebody throws a stone at a tiger, he would be punished. Now, just see. So it's satirical. Second one is critical. He criticizes. In a way, he makes fun of the Tiger King, but he criticizes. Now, see, the Tiger King, when he was born, uh, the astrologer said he a tiger would kill him. And then finally it came to that the hundred tiger he when he grow, grows up and he's told that a tiger would you would a tiger would kill him he was a brave person a king and he goes about killing a tiger and goes to the astrologer look i've killed a tiger you said the tiger would kill him the astrologer said well you can kill 99 tigers in the same manner but when it comes to the hundred tiger it would kill you the hundred tiger so look why did he go about killing tigers he shouldn't have killed 99 tigers also reach the hundred mark to expose himself to that tiger. He shouldn't have. But then he went about killing tigers, facing all kinds of problems and all that, and killing tigers. And the, finally, the hundred tiger did kill him, though it was a lifeless toy tiger. Wooden lifeless toy tiger that brought about his death. Okay. So, it's... Uh, it's satirical. First point is satirical. You have need to write them in sentences, proper sentences, but not in details because a three two mark question only. Critical, conversational, as if he's conversing with somebody. Narrative and humorous, of course. It's humorous, very very. It makes you. It's light-hearted, like it makes you laugh. 
Okay, so humorous. The style is satirical, critical, conversational, as if he's conversing with you. Narrative as a narration and humorous, of course. The third question, how do we know that Dr. Sadao was conscientious as well as loyal? Loyal to the country and conscientious towards his, sincere towards his job, his profession. Remember, he's a doctor. Hmm? And doctors take, a, take an oath after they finish their degree that they are going to save lives. And his work was to save life. He's a doctor. So when the wounded enemy soldier reaches his house, not reaches his happens to fall near <clears throat> behind his house, he picks him up. He's bleeding in a very critical condition and he realizes he's a prisoner of war by the cap that he was wearing and the world war was of course going on. He realizes, he hesitates, his wife hesitates, taking a prisoner of war home and treating him, he could be, if people come to know, he could be termed as a traitor. You know, the war is going on, India-Pakistan war, right? And suddenly I have a man, a prisoner of war, a Pakistani prisoner of war in my house. That would, I am a traitor then. But then, but then he took that risk. He had the courage to take the risk and it took him in, treated him, operated him, treated him, took care, good, good care of him and he got well. Okay, so he was sincere towards his profession, conscientious, sincere towards his profession, but then loyal towards his country. Okay, so he goes on when the, uh, the prisoner of war is almost recovered. Okay, he goes to the general and remember the general had not let Sadao go to the uh, war front because he was treating the general and the general, this general was sick and he may need the services of Sadao, the doctor. So when he goes to treat him, he's called for, he informs the general, well, there was a prisoner of war and he was so bad condition and I took him and now he's okay and uh, informs him. General says, don't worry, I'll get rid of him. So that at least he can, he can claim that, well, I, I told that I have a prisoner of war, an enemy soldier in my house. I've told the general, he could say that. The general said, okay, well, doesn't matter. I would send assassins, killers, my personal killers, who would, uh, who would come to your house, leave the door of the uh, soldier open, and they could come and they know the how to kill a person without making a noise. Okay, so they'll kill him and they would throw him in the sea behind. So nobody would know, you not even your wife would know what happened to the prisoner. You could tell her that she escaped. So he was loyal. Because he informed the general and agreed, well, yes, I'll leave the door open. Your people can come, your two men can, killers can come and kill him and throw him in the sea. So he was loyal also. Okay. Uh, then now these are long answer questions. Question number seven are long answer questions. They are five marks and you have to write them in 120 to 150 words. Children, this difference between short answers and long answers are like <clears throat> you say Sadao was uh, loyal, uh, was sincere towards his profession. Now, here in the two marks, you would say briefly, he brought the wounded soldier in a critical condition home, treated him and re the soldier recovered. So he was true to his profession. That's it. But if you are writing the same uh, question in a long answer question, wherein you have to write in 120 to 150 words, you will have to give all the details there. Right? So the detailed explanation has to be there in a long answer question. Now, the first question of uh, question number seven is, deep water and indigo bring out the importance of overcoming fear. In order to be able to lead uh, normal lives successfully, our lives successfully. Uh, remember, if we are full of fear, children, um, fear is a natural response, true. But then uh, we need it to be able to come out of that fear. We need to be a normal 
person. Otherwise, anything, uh, it would create fear in your mind and it would freeze you like. Uh, question number seven, deep water and indigo. Okay, so imagine yourself, uh, they both talk about overcoming the, the need to overcome fear. Hmm? And uh, imagine yourself to be a motivational speaker who has to address high school students. Uh, write the address in about 120 to 50 words, elaborating on the occurrences from the two texts to inspire and to convince them about the need to overcome the fear. Remember, children, uh, you have to go into the details. But then, uh, uh, remember, deep water, there was Douglas there. And when he was a child, perhaps a teenager, he almost died while learning to swim. Okay, he had a near-death experience and that developed fear in him. He could not go fishing, canoeing or boating, etc. Right near a river. It, it developed fear in him. Naturally, if he has a death-like experience. Okay, and then later on he decided when he grew up, he decided he must overcome the fear. Indigo also talks about Mahatma Gandhi in Champaran where... Uh, Mahatma Gandhi was taken there to Champaran by Rajkumar Shukla and uh, because they were uh, farmers and they used to do cultivation on the land owned by the British and the British exploited them. Okay, And they could not just, there were some cases also in the law courts but then nothing could be done about it. Okay, So uh, Rajkumar Shukla requested Gandhiji to accompany him to Champaran and see what can be done about the peasants there. Okay, so when Gandhiji, Gandhiji had not even heard of Champaran, which is in Bihar, but then he accompanied, after great persuasion, he accompanied Rajkumar Shukla and he went to Champaran. And there he saw the plight of the farmers and it took him about a year to to, to sort out a little bit of the problem. And what he considers or what I consider after reading the lesson is the greatest, uh, greatest achievement was the people, the farmers, the poor farmers getting rid of the fear they had of the British. They never ever raised their voice against the British. The exploitation, the atrocities that were committed by the British. So they may not come out openly even. Even the educated people would not come out openly against the British. So scared everybody was. And if the farmers are poor, what would be their condition, you can imagine. Okay, so Gandhiji's main aim was to help them to overcome that fear. So once they overcome the fear, they can raise their voice and and do things themselves, get justice for themselves. So that's the question. And this is, as a speaker, motivational speaker, you have to address the high school students, inspiring them and the, making them understand the need to overcome the fear. You know, some people have the fear of lizards. Some people have the fear of uh, cockroaches, any cockroach, and they'll shriek. Lizards, lizards does nothing. Cockroach does nothing, but then there is a fear. Okay, so what points you are going to include in this? Uh, we, uh, you could begin, they have given you the intro, uh, introductory sentence. We all know that what it is uh, like to be afraid. Fear is our body's natural response to a perceived threat or a danger. But when, and you can continue. And what points you are going to include is, fear immobilizes prevents us from progressing. William Douglas, due to his fear, could not go fishing and canoeing, etc. Similarly, due to their fear of the British, the peasants of Champaran dare not raise their voice against the injustice that was done to them. Get, now, getting around the courthouse in Motihari, 
getting around the courthouse in motihari was a step towards overcoming their fear remember when gandhi ji was summoned in motihari and they felt he had something he he was like um, something wrong between the british and the uh, gandhi ji what did they do they came in thousands remember those were not the days of mobile and so on and so forth nobody announced to them this is going to happen but the next day uh, gandhi ji was to appear in the law court so the next day that was the orders issue one day and next day the town of motihari was full of peasants thousands had gathered because they know they 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 they, they realized that the mahatma who had come to help them was in trouble with the authorities so thousands gathered not think fear stricken people and yet thousands gather in motihari just to show their support to gandhi ji that was the beginning of liberation from the fear beginning of liberation from the fear then second point could be uh, requires it requires determination children and perseverance determination i'm going to do it and i do it remember you wish to get up early in the morning and say i'm going to study in the morning and then uh, you feel lazy well tomorrow i'm going to get up early in the morning today to it's okay i'll i'll sleep okay so you should be determined no i'm going to get up so i need to get up and i'm going to get up then there's perseverance you may not succeed the first time if you were to talk about douglas remember when he grew up in he realized he was Uh, these examples you have to give children when he realized that he uh, fear he had a fear of water and he could enjoy certain water sports so he decided to hire a trainer who could train him how to swim the trainer trained him trained him uh, do this way with your legs with your hands and then put your head in water and breathe and out and this and that he trained him. and a time comes when he said i've done all that i could the trainer had finished the master who was teaching him how to swim had finished his work he couldn't teach any more but the fear was still there so get out of the fear he had to practice himself that is known as perseverance he continued to practice for months and then he went about to various water bodies and trying to find out whether he had got rid of the fear or not but miniature fear a little bit of fear did come up time and again but he continued he persevered he could have said well yes i i have done so much of it so much of practice and all that still i'm sorry i cannot get rid of the fear of water no he continued continue till the finally when he realized there was no fear at all of water so that is what is called perseverance you have to solve a mathematical sum or a numerical or uh, something of that sort you are unable to you say i cannot it's i cannot it's not possible impossible no you sit down you sit down no i will not get up unless i solve this or i understand this you determine and you sit and you don't move from there then you're determined to sit there i'm not going to get up till i finish this i understand this and you keep on persevering wrong ticket doesn't matter i'll make an effort i'll make an effort that perseverance would be fruitful later on so that's perseverance <clears throat> and for the peasants of champaran it took nearly an year for the peasants of champaran to get justice it took them nearly an year that means they persevered there was a time when gandhi ji was there there was a towards the end he doesn't want to be there he says almost one year i've spent here i'm going to go there they could say no now we cannot do towards the end of that lesson indigo there is cf andrews a supporter a great admirer of gandhi ji he'd come there he was a britisher but then he was fighting for the cause of the indian freedom and he was a great admirer of gandhi ji and he was a britisher huh? so when he came to meet gandhi ji there he was going somewhere so uh, they said the lawyers etc dr rajinder prasad and so on and so forth they said well can we have him when now that you are going can we have him in champaran cf andrews says i have no problem if gandhi ji permits so so but gandhi says no 
He told them, you need to be self-reliant. If he is there, that means you are still not out of your fear. You have to be fearless fighting for your own cause. You be, your cause is just and therefore, and you are fearless. That means you have no fear of the British. Why do you need to seek the support of a Britisher? So it took them a long, long time. Right. To come out of their fear, almost a year or a little more than that. No. Uh, remember, common fear requires unity, as in case of Champaran presence. Common fear, a fear that was faced by the peasants of Champaran, it's not an individual fear. I'm scared of lizards. Okay, there's no need of any unity. I'm scared, so I need to get rid of the fear of the lizard. Okay, but then if many people, several people or many people, they have the same fear, well, they need to have be united to be able to face the fear, as in case of Champaran peasants. Now, once, and you could conclude with this, once the fear is overcome, life can be lived to its fullest. Life can be lived to its fullest. I see a lizard, I'm scared, and as soon as I see a lizard, my goodness, oh, what kind of a thing is this? I go to a place, I look around if there's a lizard there. Now, if I'm rid of this fear of lizards, I can live my life to the fullest. I can go anywhere, it doesn't matter, there's a lizard, let it be. It was not going to fall on me. Even if it falls on me, what is it going to? Nothing. So we can life, live life to the fullest and therefore there is a need to get rid of the fear. And who would get rid of the fear? We ourselves will have to work for it. Okay. Now the next question is, their mother's side, question number two, long answer question, beta. Um, um, their mother's side, Sophie watched her back. This is going places. This is the last story in your Flamingo, book Flamingo. Sophie washed her back, stooped over the sink and wondered, wondered at the um, incongruity of the delicate bow which fastened her apron strings. Here going places, Sophie is watching her mother. There's Sophie, there's a father, father who's very dominating, very strict, especially with his girl, with his uh, daughter. And there's an elder brother and there's a younger brother. Younger brother is the darling of all. He does whatever he feels like. And there's the elder brother who's working as a mechanic. He's learning to be a mechanic. He goes out. And then there's the only sister, Sophie, the second child in the family. Now she sees her mother. She looks at her mother. Mother is near the sink and washing. Okay. An incongruity. Remember congruent triangles, if you learnt in the lower classes in geometry. Crongle triang triangles are similar triangles. Okay, so incongruency means dissimilarity. The bow, the bow was delicate. It's a beautiful, delicate bow. Hmm? And then the kind of life she's leading, the apron that she's wearing. Remember, we do not, it's a long lesson, long story, but we do not hear her speaking at all. The mother. She does not speak. She does not open her mouth. They all, the elder one, Sophie as a younger one and the father, they all go to watch the football match and see their star footballer, Danny Casey. She's not taken there. She doesn't have to say. The father questions Sophie. He talks to her and he makes fun of her. You have dreams and you're going, one day you're getting a daydreamer and one day you're get, going to get us in trouble and all that. But the mother doesn't speak. She has no say in the family matters. Okay. She is so much dominated. She's taken for granted. Taken for granted that she's going to do the household work and that's all. She doesn't need any outing or nothing, nothing, nothing of that sort. Now, this, uh, there's a li two lines from un Aunt Jennifer. The massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. That also tells that she is leading a very unhappy married life. Now imagine a conversation between Sophie's mother and Aunt Jennifer with reference to the two extracts given above. 
Aunt Jennifer, what kind of a married life she is leading. Sophie's mother, what kind of married life she is leading. If you find there is a lot of similarity there. The only difference could be that Aunt Jennifer has a hobby. She embroiders and therefore she gives expression to her innermost desire to be free and fearless. Independent, free and fearless. Okay. But then imagine a conversation between Sophie's mother and Aunt Jennifer with reference to the two extracts given enough above. You have to refer to the two extracts given above. Okay. That means um, Sophie's mother there doing the work, household work in the corner. Everybody else in the family sitting there and talking and discussing whatever it is. She's quietly, silently doing her work. She has no say in the family matters. So you have a conversation between Sophie's mother and Aunt Jennifer. Uh, you could begin like this. Sophie's mother, conversation, two people talking. Uh, Sophie's mother says, your embroidery is so beautiful. Do you love tigers? That's a question she asks Aunt Jennifer. Now, you can imagine what Aunt Jennifer is going to say. Okay, that's a conversation you have to have. The Remember, it's 120 to 150 words. Long answer question. And it's to be in a con form of a conversation. Uh, now, the points that are given there, that you're going to include uh, in the conversation, Aunt Jennifer shares her loss of identity. She has no identity. No identity whatsoever. Neither has Sophie's mother. Loss of identity Embroidery means to express her deep desire. While the uh, Sophie's mother, servile role. Servile is like a servant. Like a servant does the work. You have servant at home. You have a maid at home. What does she come? She comes and does the work. Suppose she's washing the dishes. She'll quietly be washing the dishes. All the others may be talking, enjoying, conversing. <coughs> but she has nothing to say. She cannot... She's not a family member to interrupt or say something or pass a comment or remark or say something, nothing. So she's a servant because she's a maid. She's a servant. Similarly is Sophie's mother. She's just to do the household work and that's all. The servile attitude or role, not attitude, I would say. She, she plays a servile role. No life of her own. Stays at home even when the whole family goes to watch the football match. Both are burdened with responsibilities. Both have domineering attitudes, uh, husbands. Both have domineering husbands who dominate. No say in family matters, both of them. And no hope of any change. There is no hope of any change in Sophie's mother's life as well as and Jennifer. Now you're going to include these points in the conversation you're going to have with uh, Aunt Jennifer. Aunt Jennifer is going to have it with Sophie's mother. Children, uh, given there, there is an option there, mind you. This is not easy. You know the points, but then how do you how do you say conversational style, asking question and answering them? So if you choose to write this, take care. You are able to write it properly. The eighth question is, again, five marks, 120 to 150 words. Question number uh, eight, first one. On returning home, Tishini Doshi writes her thoughts on how her decision to uh, enroll for the students on ICE program has been a single most important decision of her life. That was completely that has completely transformed her. You could begin, I thank my stars enough for having cashed in on the opportunity of, and you can continue. That's the, she's going to write it down. Now, uh, the first one is, first point is different experiences, still not inhabited by humans, a place not inhabited by humans. Then it gives insight into the Earth's past, present and future. 
Next point is understand the threat faced by the environment and earth due to human activities. And little changes can have major impact. Very important. Very little changes could have lead to major impacts. And therefore, you need to take care of the small things because the small things impact is major. The big, it impacts many, many things. So you need to take care of the small things to be able to, to avoid the major impact. Then everything on this earth is interlinked. Everything on this earth is interlinked. You cannot isolate one from the other. These are the points that you need to include. Any four points you could include in this answer. Now, the second part. Both Bama and Zitkikala Sa experienced the harsh realities of discrimination in their childhood. Instead of letting it pull them down, they found a way to overcome it. You wish to include a cameo that's of both in your upcoming blog post. Okay, details about their life, that's a cameo. Compare and contrast the experiences faced by the two and their responses in about 120 to 150 words. Include similarities and differences in the discrimination they faced, their feelings and determination to overcome and the final success. Zit Kala Sa faced the discrimination due to cultural difference. She's admitted in a school where they do not permit long hair. And she, in her tribe, cowards had short shingled hair. So she did not want her hair to be cut. She does not give in easily. She refuses, first of all, she refuses to have a haircut. And finally, she does not, she runs away, she hides herself. And uh, then what happens? She hides herself, but then she's found and she's dragged. And she, she does not even give in easily. She tries to hit and pull and all that and all that. Finally, she's tied to a chair and then her hair is cut and she's in tears. Why did they have to? Whereas Bama was enraged, Bama, what happened with Bama? Bama, while she was coming from school home, she saw a, a member of her community holding a vadai, vadai some South Indian eatable. She, Bama is from India and the, the Zitkala Sa is from America. And uh, he's holding the vadai with a stick and the, in the stick there's a uh, string hanging and the string has the varai tied in a paper. So the string is there, the varai is there hanging and there is a wooden stick there. So the, the varai does not touch the body of the, the person who's carrying it, a member of a community. She laughs, she says what a funny scene it is and he gives and goes to, the, to, the, to a landlord who opens and eats it. Now, she, she's, she is amused by that. She laughs at it and tells her brother. Brother says, no, there's nothing to laugh about it. She says, why? She said, we are, the, the man who's carrying the vadai for the landlord is, is an untouchable. We are untouchable. And if he had touched that which uh, the landlord was to eat, it would be touched. He wouldn't eat it. And now she felt bad that we are untouchables. That means nobody needs to touch and if we touch something that is uh, to be eaten, they won't eat and all that. And she felt humiliated and insulted and she wanted to go and touch the vadai that the zamidar or the man was eating, the landlord was eating. Humiliation. Okay. But then brother calmed her down and told her, well, if you study hard, if you get a good rank, then these people of the higher caste would become your friends. They would want you to become friends. Remember, both experienced it, Kala, Sa and Bama, both experienced such humiliation in their childhood. But first of all, they were very sensitive enough to feel it. Others, this could have happened with others also, did happen, but nobody remembered and felt humiliated and all that. As children they faced, they did not forget it. They did not forget the humiliation faced by the people 
and when they grew up they studied well excelled in the studies and succeeded as writers and once both of them succeeded as writers they wrote against this discrimination the discrimination that was discrimination that was done to their caste or to their tribe zit kalasa it was the tribe cultural difference and bama was the caste untouchables so and made the people aware when they are going to write the all the details and in the papers it would make the people aware of the injustice that was being done to their communities the respective communities and all that so this was the answer to the question and remember when you uh, when you are selecting a question which one to do uh, a question may appear to be very easy children but then what points to write many are times very easy questions you don't have points to write and you keep on repeating the same things you won't get marks so when you're selecting a question see whether you have the points to write there and one mark, two mark question will have two points and five mark questions will have at least four points there right so these are the questions from the sample paper that is posted by the cbsc and i have tried it to uh, discuss it with you and i hope you would find it helpful in your studies and uh, i haven't done the writing skills writing skills are there are options there too there is a notice there in the writing skill section b then there is an invitation also a reply to the invitation and there's a letter to and then there's an article also so in my next video i would write them i would have i would be writing the format and the points and I, as i've written the points here today i would be explaining them to you in my next video thank you children So thank you children hope to meet you again for the writing skills in the next video thank you